Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during, and after their time on the programme. Welcome to the next episode of Sausage on a Fork, and I am absolutely unbelievably delighted to say that I have been joined by none other than David Lynch, who played one of the most terrifying characters in Grange Hill ever. He played Booger Benson. David, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Thank you, and I hope you're really scared. <laughs> I am. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. When you flashed up on Zoom, I thought, "Oh no, there's Booger Benson. What have I let myself in for here?" Okay, David. What we'll do is we'll start uh, the interview the way we start all, all of the the interviews, and if we we'll just go right back. And if you can tell us how you got into acting, first of all. Okay. Um. Well, from a really young age, I really wanted to be an actor. Uh, and I got involved in amateur dramatics in Gateshead, which is where I'm from. Right. Um, so I joined a youth theatre in Gateshead, uh, did a little bit of work there uh, and joined one in Newcastle, which was also attended by Neil Tennant from the oh, Pet right. Shop Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were in the same youth theatre group right. and did a few productions. Um, so that was fun. And then I applied to go to drama school uh-huh. so I sort of left the the grim north if you like <laughs> right. it's lovely it's the lovely north now uh, but it was grim when I lived there I tell you. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, so I moved to London went to a drama uh, school the drama centre uh, yeah. and trained there for a legitimate career in acting right uh, okay. and so can I just I don't know how legitimate it was but it's it certainly <laughs> Uh, it was it was like joining the army, to be honest. Oh, right. Okay. It was everything I didn't think acting was. It was essentially sweeping the floors. It it really prepared you for for a life in the theatre, I suppose, at that time. Right. And um, how old were you at that time when you when 16, you left? I was um, I was a, a, a real I, I don't know. I, I, I'd never really left Newcastle, really. And so to sort of go down to London. Uh, yeah at that age and sort of try and find accommodation and sort of set myself up. And, and it was, and everyone else was a lot older, to be honest with you. I right. think there's only one or two others. Uh, P.S. Brosnan was in about the year above me. Right. So that was, um, I mean, he's had a terrific career, of course, uh, but meeting people like him who'd been around the world quite a bit, everyone seemed so much more mature. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, I, I trained to be an actor, though at that time it did seem to be like an army training camp. Right. It was, uh, it was hard work and really disciplined. So it kind of did set me up. It, it's, it was like, oh, what do you call it? Like national service for actors. That's what okay. it felt like, to be honest. Yeah. You felt if you could survive going to the drama centre, you could survive anything. <laughs> so right. it, it was a tough experience. Um and then I, I kind of like like many actors at the time needed to get an equity card uh-huh. um, so you have to do all sorts of things that are a bit bizarre and weird to get your equity card <laughs> right, okay. so I ended up doing children's theatre um, and touring around schools um, uh-huh. playing a punk rock Prince Charming I seem to remember <laughs> right. uh, yeah um, those were the days I tell you uh, <laughs> Um, and that was quite fun. Um, so I suppose that's how I really got into it. But it it was, it was. I suppose my dream was to become. Come, and, I, and I don't mean this in a sort of glib way, but a legitimate actor, if you like. Uh-huh. Yeah. I wanted to be on the stage. I wanted to do good roles. Uh, and um, I did some sort of regional rep theatre sort of touring right. around well not touring around but sort of uh, rep companies and uh, uh, so I did a little bit of that for a while and then I got an agent who got me some tv work and uh-huh. I suppose that's how I got into a little bit of tv right okay so I, I was looking at your uh, your IMDB page and I always say you know it's not the most reliable of sources IMDB but it will have things on there so I noticed that the first one you had was Pinocchio 
That's the fact. Are you trying to shame me? Are you trying to shame me? <laughs> the first one I had was Pinocchio. So, uh, well, that, <laughs> yes, that, that's I, the I, think, I think it probably was actually. Yeah, it that's was. the first. Uh, Let's see playing Lampwick, who you know. For anyone that knows the story of Pinocchio, Lampwick's a little bit of a, a little bit of a character, isn't he? He's a, a bit of a well, rascal. It, like. <laughs> it set the tone for the rest of my acting career. <laughs> it's okay. Playing <laughs> Lampwick, I kind of played deviants. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and, and even, <laughs> even <laughs> that sort of uh, way, it was uh, it was strange casting. But I, I I don't know. They must have seen something there that thought. He looks uh, like you might cross the the other side of the street if you saw him coming along. But, <laughs> but it was good to get it actually because it was a good um, first rung of the ladder in a way because the producer on that was someone called Barry Letts who right. had done an awful lot of children's um, classical, how would you put, put it, sort of uh, classical uh, drama series in terms of hence Pinocchio. So uh, the Production value is really, really good uh -huh. for that time, um, and um, it, yeah, that was the first thing that I did, sort of transforming into a donkey. That's yeah. what I seem to remember. And you know, the funniest thing about it was I had to uh, make the sound of a donkey, and now I was going eor, 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 <laughs> and I was saying, "Can't you do it with more feeling?" <laughs> don't sound like it. And I was thinking, they never trained me for this at drama school. <laughs> uh, oh, brilliant. Uh, yeah. did, you, did you get to work with any, like, you know, anyone famous, any big names in those early days? And um, Well, in those early days, I mean, I, I did a summer season with someone called Bernie Winters. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Schnorbitz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was in it, you see. And Linda Barron. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. who wow. was in Open All Hours. Yeah, and some, uh, Gladys Emanuel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, who sort of uh, tragically died, unfortunately died uh, not that long ago. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, but yeah, I, I, I suppose that was my first brush with uh, celebrity. <laughs> right. And okay. I, I, I must have, I must have been a complete knobhead, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, for, I remember walking around. Um, I think it was in Great Yarmouth in pajamas. It was uh, sort of at the punk height of punk, right. and um, I don't know. I thought it was really trendy to walk around in pajamas. And <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to Great Yarmouth, but uh, I, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think anyone bothered. To be honest, it's a bit like Blackpool. You can wear what you want. Right, okay. uh, well, yeah, yeah. So I think I got away with it, but it was a very strange but interesting, um, I suppose, baptism of fire into the world of variety. I uh -huh. suppose at that time, so it was like summer season and yeah. up here. Um, and at that time, there was also people like Dick Emery, yeah. uh, who's another sort of comedian of that sort of ilk, if you like. Uh -huh. So that was quite interesting to be involved in that. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, that was fun. So what, what sort of things were you doing in the summer season then? Uh, it, it was it was just a, a, a I think it was sort of playing Bernie Winter's younger son or right. one of the sons in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh very cool. Uh, and it, it was just a play, it was sort of a, a sort of bit of a farce. Right, I get you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah so it just ran and ran and ran uh, when these things could. I don't think you'd get away with it these days. <laughs> right. But I mean, uh, but it uh, it put bombs on seats. I mean, it, it yeah. did quite well for that time. Brilliant, brilliant. So then, because there was a, a few other bits, uh, I think you were in the series of a TV series of Quatermass and a program yeah. called the called the Squad, which I think was about police. Was it? Um, That's right. Playing very similar characters, Boone. Right. Minder, or yeah, um, all very, very similar type of deviant characters. Right, okay. I, I think you know typecasting. I think that's <laughs> yeah. How did Grange Hill come about then? Um, I think probably at the time, though I can't. I'm not 100 percent sure on this. I might have had the same agent as Todd Carty. Oh, right, okay. And they were getting. Uh, wind of the idea that they wanted to introduce a school bully uh -huh. um, and so I was put up for 
the audition, uh, met Colin Kant, who was right. the director producer yeah. at that time, uh, and I was cast in the part of Booger. Right. Uh, oh. And I suppose I wasn't aware of how many episodes. I suppose these things you kind of go into them, and you just don't know whether it's going to be, yeah. you know, uh, a couple of episodes or what. Um, but, but I think on reflection and especially uh, looking back at it now, I think I did seem an awful lot older than some of the other yeah. people. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and it was the reality. I was in my 20s. Uh, uh, it's okay. And, you know, uh, I was like the granddad and everyone sort of recognised that. I think. Right, but yeah. I mean, the the, the uh, elephant in the TV room was the fact yeah. it looks slightly older. Yeah. But So were, were you aware of Jane Chill? At the time, you know, being a you know on telly, I mean, because there was only obviously the three channels. Um, so were you aware of the program and and how big it was at that time? Because even in its first its first few years, it was causing controversy, wasn't it? Yeah, I I I think I was. So, I mean, it, it was a, and I suppose people still to today day still sort of remember it. You know, uh-huh. uh, obviously. Uh, great fondness uh and my name comes up a great deal of fear i suppose yeah <laughs> but, but but people do seem to i mean yeah it, it's um at the time it was something quite different and, and quite unique and i think probably it was the start of realistic children's drama huh. to be honest with you Definitely, uh, yeah. because i think a it reflected a lot of people's experience. I mean, I have to say, growing up where I grew up in a council estate in Gateshead, it was fairly soft because I mean, the school I went to, the secondary school I went to, bullying was a daily thing, yeah. to be honest. It was just, it it was a tough school. Yeah. On a sort yeah. of council estate in Gateshead, so. When you joined the show, did you, because obviously it was... I think four episodes. I think it's listed as you as you being in. Yeah, were, yeah. were you were were you aware? Because you've mentioned about the number of episodes. Were you aware that it was only going to be such a short run? I don't think they sold it to me like that. Right. Okay. <laughs> I get you. You're only going to be in four of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just, to be honest with you, I was just pleased for the work. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Jobbing actor, I suppose, and yeah, uh-huh. and, and I hadn't done that much TV. You know, I played Lampwick, and who later transformed into a donkey. <laughs> Uh, and that was it really but uh so it, it was it felt um quite an important role to have and i have to admit i mean uh it people like todd carty i mean i i do remember him as someone who who was really welcoming to to right. fresh members of the cast uh-huh. and i actually think i i learned quite a lot quite quickly from him because right. obviously it was his bread and butter. He was doing it a lot of the time. So yeah. someone who'd who'd, who'd uh, been doing summer season or children's theatre to suddenly go into television is a different yeah. kind of technique. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think sort of observing him uh, and other members of the cast, I suppose, it, it, it was, uh, I, I found my feet quite quickly and, and I found everyone really quite welcoming, really. Uh, although there was that age difference. Yeah. Uh, which I think what became a bit of a running joke in a way. <laughs> That's what I seem to remember. <laughs> right. So then did you because obviously you, you, you weren't there for such a long time, but who did you find yourself spending most time offset with? Was it were you with it the adults Todd. or the children? All oh, right, okay. Yeah, uh, really Todd Carty. Uh, bit of Terry Suplat. I mean, God rest his soul. I mean, yeah. I mean there was nothing not to like about him, to be honest. He was a really yeah. genuine uh, kid, really. Uh, but no, I, I got on really well with Todd, actually, I, I, uh, I seem to recall. So, yeah, I spent quite a bit of time uh, with him. But everyone was really incredibly friendly. And it was slightly like being back at school. Right, OK. It, it really was. And I did tend to gravitate to, I suppose, as I sort the kids rather than the the teachers, uh-huh. uh, regardless of my uh, <laughs> my age. Right, okay. I think we all sat. I can remember sitting in the BBC canteen, and you can see the look on all these sort of older actors and actresses, all dressed up in their finery, doing period dramas. <laughs> yeah. And then they go, "Oh no, school's out," and all the 
kids come in from Croatia <laughs> and cause havoc in the canteen. Brilliant. <laughs> sit there eating their bolabons and uh, whatever. Yeah, oh, brilliant. brilliant. Okay, so so Burger was introduced in Series 4, I think it was. Yeah, Series 4, which would have been filmed in 1980, went out on air at the beginning of 81. Mm. Um, and like we say, Burger was only in four episodes and the first episode, he's just sort of, he's quite, well, the, fir- the first three episodes he's in, he's quite peripheral, isn't he? he he's not, like, he's, he's around. You like you've done your research. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, that, <laughs> it's, it's not my first rodeo, this. Um, <laughs> it, it's, but Booger comes in and, and there's, there's, been, there's been a spate of vandalism um, in, the, in the school and no one ever gets caught at, at the start. And we just see Booger, he just sort of, threatens Tucker. Literally the first few times we see him, every time we every time you see Booga, he's having some kind of go at Tucker Jenkins, which you know, Tucker Jenkins was like he was the star of Grange Hill at, at the time, wasn't he? So to yeah, have yeah. someone come in and we because there'd been Michael Doyle who who he didn't exactly get on, but he wasn't really a bully to Tucker. He just didn't get on. He was just his enemy, wasn't he? But then to have someone come in who was actively threatening Tucker Jenkins, who was the star of the show, you know, was, was, was I, I think was really good writing because it showed that although Tucker always had this thing of, oh, yeah, I'm Tucker Jenkins, I'm the cheeky lad, and I will stand up to people. You know, he was terrified of Booger Benson, wasn't he? <laughs> he was absolutely terrified of him. Did you get, was there much adverse reaction? Did you get, were you in it long enough to get any adverse reaction from the public or? Well, a bit after it was went out and was broadcast, I, I did on train stations occasionally get challenged by right. by people, but uh, often not in a bad way, to be honest. I mean, uh-huh. one or two, but usually it was just, oh, there's Booger Benson. Uh, yeah. Other people sort of, um, sort of, I don't know, took offence and sort of fancied their chances, I suppose. Uh, but I was reading recently that I think it was Gripper uh, that he actually had experienced quite a lot of yeah. negative um, feedback. Yeah. When it went out. To be honest with you, no, I I didn't. And and obviously he was in it a lot longer. I mean, uh, mine was a bit of a cough and a spit, really. Compared. It's okay. Uh, uh, so you know, it had minimal uh, viewing figures, perhaps. Yeah. No, I, I didn't receive too much sort of um, uh, anger from the public. Or right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, in, in that series, it was uh, because, because the vandalism had been, uh, w- w- was rife. But the older kids were made prefects, which to me just sounded bizarre. You know, when I was watching it back as an adult, just think, okay, we'll make all the older kids prefects regardless of whether they're in school, whether they're behaving, whether, and, and that's what it was. And, and, and Booger sort of threw his weight a little bit round, started throwing his weight a little bit round a bit more, saying, well, I'm a prefect now, I can do what I want, basically. And then, as I say, the, the first three episodes, he was there, you know, threatening Tucker. Tucker had suspicions that it was Booger that was doing the vandalism a bit, but it was never, it could never be proven until episode six. Now, episode six is... That's your that was like Booger's biggest focus episode. He was in it right, you know, from the start to the end. Um, I'm sorry, there's a, a few spoiler alerts coming up for anyone that hasn't <laughs> has never seen it. But um Tucker caught Booger and, and Booger's mate Gilbo as well. We can't forget yeah. Gilbo vandalizing Mr. Baxter's office. And straight away Booger and Gilbo were after him and, and they floor him and they say, you know, you don't tell anyone about this. Booger had also ripped up. Tucker's school magazine cover entry as well, which was a heartbreaking oh, yeah. for Tucker as well. And then fed that to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I saw no. that the other day. And when you think about things like that on a kids' TV program, just showing stuff like that's quite a, a big thing for kids to be watching. I think you know the fact that you you've done that, but not only like floored them, but then ripped up the, his thing and and fed it to him as well. It's the type of thing that you just didn't see on kids' telly. Isn't yeah. it, you know? And then obviously... It's sort of it, psych- psychotic sort of yeah. uh, element to it, I think. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that was the thing with Booger. He, he wasn't he wasn't just a, a bully. He did things just to, I don't know, mm. just, to pass, just to pass his day, 
wasn't it? You know, just just to get through the day. It was just to just well, to pass you know the time. Like, I often think, why wasn't I expelled? Yeah. <laughs> How did yeah. I manage to get through to uh, whatever it was, sixth form or whatever? And I was yeah. Still, I, um, that, that was it. Yeah. yeah. I should have been in people referral centre or something. Yeah, I mean, there, there would have been something, wouldn't there? I mean, he probably would have, I don't know, at that time, if he'd been expelled at that age, he probably would have just, you know, gone on, you know, gone and done whatever he needed to do, wouldn't he, I yeah. suppose. Right, so then, after he was caught, after Tucker caught him in, in Baxter's office, you know, Mrs McCluskey then decides to uh, cancel the school disco if, if, if the culprit isn't caught. And that, that leaves Tucker with a dilemma then. Does he get get the disco to go ahead, or does he, you know, and, and get a kicking, or does he does does he look after himself? Like, and eventually he tells Mrs. McCluskey, and so they go looking for him, and they get the police involved, and stuff like that. And the disco goes ahead, and everyone's enjoying it. You know, everyone has a good everyone has a good time, and and stuff. And then they walk. They're about to leave the school, and then Booga Benson emerges from the shadows. Has anyone ever suggested to you you should do an audio book, the Grange Hill <laughs> audio book? <laughs> You've got no, me absolutely not, gripped here with this I, story. I, 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 don't know, I don't know if my accents would get me through it, to be honest, David. So then, as I say, Booger comes out the shadows. And I interviewed Paul McCarthy, who played Tommy Watson. Oh, um, yeah. I, I interviewed him, and he said, he, he talked about that. Because he said, when you watch it back, he said, when that, that menace, that walk that you did, the menacing walk, you know, when you turn, and where do you think you're going? It, it is it, when you even you watch it now. It's like it, it's not. It's not like a scene from a kids' TV program. And then the chase ensues. Then and and Tucker gets quite badly beaten up. What sort of choreography did you have for 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 the fight scenes? Oh, um. <laughs> I think the idea of choreography is just be, make me laugh a little bit. I don't know whether we actually, I'm not sure whether there was any real direction for it, right. to be honest with you. Uh, I think we, we were very much doing it for camera shot. If right, you I get you. I mean, rather than anything else. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't as if we'd done an awful lot of rehearsing for it. I, that's what I recall. Uh, uh -huh. But I do remember those scenes being shot in a school in Wilsden or somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. um, I seem to remember. Uh, so it did feel like uh, it was like a real environment. And, and it was often, as you can imagine, in terms of um, having to finish filming and sort of cramming as much as possible. It was just do your best, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think we made it up as we went along. As well. <laughs> right, it's okay. So when you say, what kind of choreography did we have? I don't think there was a great deal of it, to be honest. It was just, let's not, let's hope no one gets hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you say that. I mean, in, in, in the story, Tucker's, Tucker's character had his ribs broken and then the, the, the police were called and I'm sure they caught Booger and Booger was never seen again. Oh, there you go. After that. Um, Expelled. Yeah, I, I, I think you know there might have been a little bit more to just just getting expelled as well. Yeah. But yeah, so that was the end of Booger's time on Grange Hill. Sorry, can I just go back one second because you, when you were talking about the um, the the fight scenes and things, yeah, I don't yeah. know whether thinking about back about it, whether the fact that I was slightly older added to that menace. Yeah, to be honest with you. Uh, because I, I I was that little bit older, uh, thicker set, uh, stronger in some respects. So I, I wonder if that did play into that. Yeah, um, maybe. I, I wonder. So it was quite good casting, I think, by Colin Cant uh -huh. to some extent, but a bit short, short lived, to be honest, because obviously people were beginning to twig, you know, it was the elephant in the room. I looked a lot older. People yeah. were thinking, what's he still doing at school? Whatever. <laughs> but I suppose it worked for, for the for the script at that time. Yeah. Can I, I, I also ask actually about that. How did you find doing the accents? Um, um, my ability to do accents is not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to be completely frank with you. So, yeah. uh, 
Yeah, but uh, they hadn't asked for Geordie Bully, so... Right, OK. Well, that, that's fair enough. Yeah. OK, no, so, then, so then after Grange Hill, what did you do then? Um, I did a sort of range of very, very similar type roles in uh, uh, things like Boone, which was right, okay, yeah. uh, Minder, uh, and I did a little bit of theatre work. Um, and finally, I suppose my, my last television credit, I suppose it was Juliet Bravo oh, against right. Colin Cand. And it was the last ever episode of Juliet Bravo uh, where I kicked someone down the stairs as sort of one of the right. leads. Okay. Yeah, so there's a sort of running theme here. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that was my last TV and probably my last acting role, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, right, okay. Okay, yeah. so... So did you sort of make a decision to stop acting or? I'd love to say that I retired from acting, but <laughs> right, I think okay. acting retired me. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> Essentially, I, it just wasn't bringing in the steady uh, uh, work right. uh, and money. And yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, I, I suppose, yeah. as you said there about you felt like you were typecast as well and I suppose if if jobs aren't calling for that type of role absolutely yeah yeah okay. and, and I suppose you know as, uh, the typecasting was sort of young thugs uh -huh. uh, by which time I was getting into my sort of early mid-twenties right uh, and I could see that there wasn't that much on the horizon for, uh -huh. for people of my build, my my and my stature, uh, uh, my looks, everything. I was just thinking, well, where will I fit in here? Uh, yeah. And it wasn't that obvious at the time what would be, if you like, what niche I would fit into. Right. So then, so what did you what did you decide to do then? From there. Um, I went to university uh, and did a science degree, sort of. Um, a psychology degree in Hull right. uh, and then came back to London and worked um, as a mental health social worker with homeless mentally ill people. Oh, brilliant. So I did that throughout most of the 80s, early 90s uh, uh -huh. and then just continued to work in mental health. Oh, brilliant. Mental health. Yeah. It's kind of the 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 psychotic in me, and the, psych <laughs> the psychosis in Booger, if you like. I channeled it into to working with uh, yeah with the other people. Yeah, I, I suppose that must be a really rewarding job. I think at the time it was more rewarding than the rewards I was getting from TV or, right. or theatre, yeah. um, because unless they were going to be sort of relatively well written or good roles like Booger Benson, I suppose, I felt quite uh, unfulfilled in many uh -huh. ways. Um, and I suppose working with within mental health and social work or health, you, you do have to use very sort of transferable skills uh -huh. as to acting in terms of empathy, um, uh, the ability to sort of uh, at least pretend you know what you're doing, even if you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In terms of really complex situations and blag, uh, yeah, a bit uh, just to get people to talk to you. Uh, in yeah. terms of outreaching people who are on the street, you have to have a bit of, um, I don't know, just the ability to to engage and uh, w take whatever comes. So, uh, and there was no lack of drama put it that way <laughs> right okay yeah yeah so it fed that part of me if you see what I mean in terms uh -huh. of, and you know outreaching around the streets of London you know it, it, night after night it you, you came across all sorts of things I can imagine yeah, yeah I can imagine so are you still involved in that now then um yeah I've kind of I sort of worked as a um, mental health social worker and then as a manager within community mental health. And I now um, lead, I'm the lead for quite a big mental health trust in London as their safeguarding lead. Oh, so nice. I kind of work with issues around um, 
neglect and abuse and uh, around the prevent counterterrorism uh, uh -huh. agenda as well. Yeah. Uh, so, gosh, we've got very serious all, all of a sudden. Yeah, but, no, no. yeah, I mean, Booga's done all right. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like, yeah. <laughs> he came out the other end. <laughs> no, that's that that's brilliant. Like, as I say, I, you know, as you said there, you know, what, 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 what you did when you left acting, and what you're doing now, you know, they're all really rewarding stuff, really rewarding things, and really important things as well to, yeah. to, to be doing as well. And I, lo I love hearing the stories of what people have done since Crane Jill, and, and everyone's gone off and done different things, and I, ju I, I just think it's, it's yeah, great. Like, absolutely. I mean, yeah. as you imagine most people would, I suppose, to some yeah. extent, but it is very varied. I mean, in a way, I'd, I'd love the character of Booger to come back in a way, uh, as maybe a, a sort of uh, Booga left school, became homeless, mentally ill, which you can imagine. Yeah. The character might well have gone down that pathway. Yeah. Uh, plug, plug. So if there's a role, well, I mean, there, I'm up for it. <laughs> the, you know, the, the, there has been talk recently of, um, you yeah. know, Phil, Phil Redmond making a Grange Hill movie. If you were asked, would we see a return of Booga Benson? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <Definitely>. Brilliant. <laughs> Obviously, Grange Hill was some time ago, um, shall we say. Are you still in touch with anyone from from the programme? No, no one at all, no. Right, okay. So if anyone were, is listening who was involved and they want to get in touch with Booger, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to get in touch with Booger Benson. Get in touch with David Lynch. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that one, but not Booger. But if, you're, if you were and you want to get in touch with him, give us a shout, I'll put you in touch. Oh, okay, David, um, we are coming to the end of the interview, but I've just got a, a, a few more questions. Go ahead. And and they're all Grange Hill related. Okay, it's not a quiz, by the way. People start panicking when I say that to them and you think I'm going to be testing their knowledge on Grange Hill, but they are all Grange Hill related. So it might be a little bit different for you because obviously you were older when it was on and and uh, and you weren't really watching, watching it. You know, I've got this funny feeling, you might say, has it ever been translated into sort of like Spanish, <laughs> no, with, no. Your, with your 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 Geordie come sort of Cockney accent <laughs> in Spanish or, or no no. The, th the first question I always ask at this point is, other than Booger Benson, who was your favourite character on Grange Hill? Trisha Yates. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely, and I don't know why, but I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people might. I mean. Uh, I just remember, remember watching it and I thought she was so real, to be honest with you. Yeah. There was something uh, that was very real about her. Uh, yeah. And um, and I know she's um, probably not acting now, but I, you know, I thought she she did really well. Yeah. That, so, but yeah, Trisha Yates. Right, Trisha, okay. Trisha Yates, isn't it, I think? Yeah, 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 Trisha Yates. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Michelle Herbert played Trisha Yates, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... If you couldn't have played Booger Benson, was there any other character on the programme you would have liked to have played? Um, Roland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay. And the final question is, why do you think that there is still such affection for Grange Hill? Uh, uh, that's a difficult question. I mean, I, I really can't answer that to... I don't know, with any sort of degree of authenticity, I suppose. <laughs> right, okay. I think, well, when I watched it, uh, it changed over time, to be honest yeah. with you. I think it became more and more real, covering certainly into the sort of the um, the 80s, uh, as the 80s progressed, covering all sorts of issues, racism, sort of drugs, mm -hmm. uh, all, all kinds of uh, social issues, I suppose. And probably it was at the early stages that kids hadn't seen anything like this before that really represented how life was for them. Yeah. Um, and, I, and it almost become, it reached the status, I think, of being almost like a kid's soap opera. Yeah. In terms of, you know, in terms of something that's reflecting back on them in terms of their school life. Uh, which they could relate to, yeah. Um, rather than Centrinians or or anything like that, you know, uh, or anything they read about, it, it it could be something that happened at school for yeah. them, or um, 
something they could definitely relate to. So I, I, I think that was the big change. I'm not sure what kids would uh, relate to these days. I mean, m maybe Holly, Holly Oaks or something uh -huh. like that. Maybe that's the crossover. Um, but I suppose for my, I, I'm just kind of thinking as well, if I hadn't been in Grange Hill, I would have really liked to have been in Biker Grove. Maybe right, my yeah. accent would have been much more acceptable then. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and then I'd know Ant and Deck as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Biker Grove, I mean, uh, I think they're very similar. Yeah. I mean, Biker Grove is Grange Hill just with Northern accents. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's actually a lot of people think and they get confused and they think that Ant and Deck we're in Grange Hill. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. I, you know, that must have something to do with the fact that, you know, as, as you've said there, they were quite similar, quite similar things. Like, yeah, no, David, listen, it, it's been brilliant uh, oh, talking you. to you. I couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm going to tell everyone. David, David got in touch with me on Twitter and at first I didn't believe it was him. And then he sent me a picture of Booger Benson. I don't know. It looked like you were out in the, on the moors somewhere or on some walk or camping or something. And I just thought, wow, Booger Benson's growing. But it was just, and I just thought, <laughs> I thought, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got to get him on. You said, I, and you I, thought I was sheep farming yeah. or something, <laughs> Wales. <laughs> as, I've, as, I've, as I said to you earlier on, yeah. there's a lot of people out there who think Booger was, was scarier than Gripper. And it was, it is such a shame. I think that Booger was only in it such a short amount of time so does my bank manager <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no but, but on, it, it has been really really good talking to you I, I've, I've really enjoyed it thanks for the opportunity i've enjoyed it oh not not at all not at all thank you so much for coming on and to anyone listening i'll speak to you next time cheers thank you bye bye